What's going on, Fargo fam? Forex Fargo checking back in. Long awaited, you know, it's overdue, but we are back with our Forex Fargo weekly webinar. Happy 4th of July, everyone. The weather up here in Massachusetts is shitty as hell. It's been raining for the past four or five days. However, let's try to keep the motivation, right? Last week, uh, we can see that, you know, we had a new month ending and then a new month beginning, right? Uh, the only day I traded last week was Friday on NFP. Just waited for the entire market to set up, right? But without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into it, right? You guys missed the information. Let's get right to it. All right. So first thing we're going to do is start off on our dollar index, of course, right? So last week, the dollar index, we can see from the weekly time frame, right? <clears throat> dollar index, you know, um, on, I think, like the second or third week of June, we had this huge push all the way back up to this supply zone, which I had marked from like, you know, uh, November levels from last year. And then it was retested back in March, right? We had a high previous, uh, we had a high of this year around like 93, 400 or so, right? So moving on, what I'm interested in, once again, if you guys are new to the channel, I like to do my little blue ellipse, right? This is what I'd prefer to trade out of. So what I will be anticipating, right? I'll be anticipating to see if we could probably catch a retracement back to the upside. However, I will be looking to see if we can catch this back down to maybe like this supply zone or something like that. Or uh, supply zone, I mean demand zone down here at the bottom, right? So I'm looking for a short on the dollar index, something like this, right? Now, because I'm looking for the short on the dollar index, all right, as we know, if the dollar is going to be falling weak, then we should have strength against the U.S. dollar, right? So on the contrary, what we'll be looking at, we'll be looking at Euro USD, right? So on EU, what we can see, all right, you know, no need for us to force anything. What I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for a price to return within my demands on which I have marked at 118740 ish or so, right? If that happens, we could probably see, you know, at least a push back up for like 100 pips or so, 100, 175 pips. So the first TP I'd probably hit right here, 119500, that's just obvious. You can see you got these wick off projections. Second one would be 119950 ish. Then the third target would probably be 120, you know, 450 ish or so, right? A particular, you know, price action things that I'm looking for, you know, it doesn't matter which time frame it is, it just the confluence has to make sense. So I'm looking for a break and a retest of this demand zone, similar to what you're seeing somewhere over here, right? So a nice four hour candle closure and then a retest right over here. So you got uh, what is this like? I forgot what, what this is called. Three down and then that one bullish. It's it's a it's some type of formation, right? Uh, what I tell you guys as traders, you know, you don't need to know everything. Just stick with what works for you, right? A lot of people, you know, are still gonna ask me, have I done my FTMO yet? No, I just been making money on my own personal account. Um, and I've been trading a lot less, right? So this is why you've seen me only post what I want to when I want to, right? Moving forward, uh, we'll go ahead and jump into AU, right? So AU, I was actually in this trade uh, last week from like down here, took my profits or whatever, expected a retracement. It just makes sense for price to retrace back down real quick to, uh, let's see real quick. So weekly level, excuse me, that's a monthly. Weekly level, we can see that that is kind of what happened last week, right? We fell from this 76 cent area all the way down to, you know, 74.50, blah, blah, blah. However, we're making its move on the way back up, right? So on the daily time frame, you can see this beautiful W formation, right? Uh, what I'd like to do is see if we can catch this all the way back down here. So if price is not going to retrace back down there. If price retraces back to this 9.75 uh, cent level, I'd be more interested in taking buys from this level. It just makes more sense institutional wise. Uh, and this could actually yield us some great returns. Uh, this is actually a position I'd probably hold um, for a long time. Not a long time, I just hold this for, for this AU position. The reason why I'm considering holding it uh, for a significant amount of time is because if we go ahead and take a look, you know, switch gears real quick. But if we go ahead and look at our Forex factory and look at, you know, the type of news that we have uh, related to, you know, the Australian dollar, we got some some big things coming out. So Tuesday, 1230, you know, right during the end of, you know, Asian session or Sydney session, we have the RBA uh, rate statement, you know, uh, 2 a.m. pre London session, you know, Governor Lowe speaks. Uh, and then we got some uh, some more movement um, 
on Wednesday, right? So if that is going to be good news for the Australian dollar, which it probably is going to be, the U.S. dollar is fucking weak as hell. Uh, so that would probably boom all the way back up to the upside and just follow my price action, right? So although I have my level marked at... Okay, the dogs woke up. <laughs> at least I have my... Come on. Come on. He wants to be in here with me? Come here, Daddy. Come here, Papa. Say hi to the camera real quick. Say hi to the camera real quick. All right. You can sit and do my daddy's webinar. All right. All right. All right. So, yeah. So, anyways, right. So, we got this 75 cent right here. Okay. This is what I'm actually interested in. If we are to, you know, have it fall down a little bit, um, I'd probably see it, you know, coming down to like these daily lows at 74. Uh, 750 or you know you could probably see it come to like 74 uh, 450 ish or so right so those are a couple of things that i'm interested in on au right uh gu once again a lot of these pairs have to do with the fact that we are looking at the dollar weakness coming up okay lay down puppy um so on a weekly time frame right because we've had all this bullish momentum on the dollar index which has just been once again you know just price collecting uh so liquidity from the upside uh, on the downside depends on you know which way you're looking at the charts so as we can see right what price happened last week you know again all, fuck all this bullish momentum i mean bearish momentum right what we're looking for we're looking for green wicks to the upside right all of these you know these wicks down here that's not important to me right so we have four or five days or a week or so of bearish momentum right but if we look to the left price has literally just returned to like some quarter two levels right um, so pretty much price, you know, you can see right here, I have a demand zone mark. Price fell between uh, 137, you know, 350-ish and 137, 520 pip zone, you know, collected some liquidity that was been holding from April, which was obviously about like two or three months prior. So with that being said, you know, what ended up happening, uh, you look at this from the smaller time frame, you can see that price literally just created a wick, you know, found some support right here, hovered a little bit and then boomed all the way back up what I am expecting, right? See, it's gonna be a little bit hard because I don't really, it's, it's okay, Maddie, that's my other one. You know, I don't preferably like trading out of all these, you know, tiny, tiny zones. Go ahead, Dad, Dad. Go ahead. I got all this hair on me now, right? So anyways, I don't prefer to trade out of these smaller zones, but I'd be interested in seeing what happens um, if price is to fall down, you know, somewhere in between here. Uh, we can probably catch this position to the upside at least back all the way up to you know 139 500 or so right so that actually be a good trade that i'll be looking for this week um on the contrary everyone you know you guys see me uh, i'm looking at buys right so you know have a trading plan you know if i'm looking for the buy and i understand the price is retracing all the way back down that does not mean that i enter the sell until i hit my fucking blue ellipse in my you know projected area of interest like that's not what happens you know what you're supposed to do is just wait follow along with the price action if you guys want to you know you can set alerts if you have trading view you know like premium or plus or something you can set an alert so like you know add alert for gbp you know 139 700 and you can alter it or something like that right so it's just it's, use things to your advantage and and work smarter not harder all right uh switching gears we're gonna go ahead and come here dada we're gonna go ahead and move on to gj real quick right so gj you know you can look at it from a monthly right you can see that just because we've had this you know month of june close bearish right what it just happened is these were some highs that we reached in 2018 so there's some liquidity that needs to be grabbed all the way back to the downside so what i'm interested in actually looking to see what happened so this weekly candle the previous weekly candle closed as like a little doji i don't know if this has been i would consider this a spinning top right as you can see you know kind of prices creating some uh lower highs lower lows lower highs lower lows lower highs so on and so forth right not going to dive into that, just how you can look at the chart. Okay, so what we're going to see right here, all right? So on the previous day, the month of June closed with the daily candle closing above this 153,200 or so, right? 225. Then we have the Thursday candle as a doji, and then you got this Friday candle as a doji, right? So kind of have like two dojis followed back to back, right? Uh, I'm kind of going to see if price will retrace all the way back down to one of these levels, 
I'd be interested if price hits these kind of weekly lows um, from last week before, you know, we're tracing all the way back up to the upside. Once again, I could be wrong, you know, price could fall all the way back down. Price could fall all the way down, you know, to um, to 150, uh, uh, you know, so a couple of things could happen, right? I'm looking for price to go up. However, do not be distraught if price happens to go the opposite direction and just collect some liquidity down there, right? So same way up there, right? I was looking to see if liquidity was going to be grabbed. Boom, it ended up booming from 120, from 152 all the way to like 154 or something like that, right? So, you know, just plan accordingly. All right. This US CAD. So US CAD, we can see, you know, uh, because we had that uh, that week of June, that week in June, the week of June 14th through the 19th, we can see that we had this huge bullish momentum. But once again, once you have your levels marked from the higher time frames, you guys know these levels have been here. You've been watching these webinars for a month, even though I haven't done anything for like four or five weeks. I haven't touched my charts at all, right? So what I do is I look to see, you know, what's interested, what's interesting to me, and I strike accordingly from there. Uh, what I can see happening, maybe, um, you know, price retracing a little bit, maybe to like one, somewhere in between right here. I'm looking at the wicks. I'm not guessing. I'm looking at the wicks in between here. Uh, then we'll go ahead and go down to a four-hour time frame. I will draw a horizontal line so you can see where that aligns to, right? And then we will be looking for a short position right there, right? Um, there has to be some type of exhaustion on USD CAD only because if we once again, it's looking at this from the weekly time frame, All right? That huge weekly candle that we had June 14th literally replaced two weekly candles back from, from April, right? So, well, I'm interested in seeing if we can catch a similar move like this. Uh, you know, doesn't need to be the full week, but if we can catch two or three days, a 24-hour position, a, a less than 24-hour position, or a 24 to 48-hour position, I'm content with it. Once again, the bread and butter for my trading has always been 50 to 75 pips. So if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. I'm just providing you know overall uh positions and, and and forecasts and what it is that i'm looking for all right and then from the two hour time frame let's see what that looks like right so two hour time frame you know yes it's not really showing anything you got this little fucking uh forgot what that's called inverted hammer or something like that however if you look at the rsi which i do not look at from time to time you know you can just see that it's a little bit oversold right there right so uh, that's one thing to keep in mind that i'm going to jump to gold real quick right but let me hit this a little bit all right so for those people interested in gold what i've been telling people gold is going to go back to 1900 got to give it some time and this is why it goes going to go back to 1900 real quick once again this is on a weekly time frame all right so off of this weekly time frame what is it that we see all right so earlier and you know sometime a couple months ago in may we hit a high of like 1900 or so a little bit before that but that was like that was like one of the that's not the high but that was approaching the high of you know the of, of earlier this year back in january around like 1940 or something like that right so bomb price ended up falling this right here was that week of june 14th and then from there what happened price is literally collecting liquidity from fucking april right so what i see happening is it's called a summer reset if you guys i've been trading for two three years even though i haven't passed my ftmo i do understand how the market moves you know still trying to uh, uh uh you know work on some of the the greatest um greatest entries and exits but besides that this is what i see happening right at some point you know that we're gonna refill this wick all the way back up to 1877 you know obviously we got some stops along the way 1800 you know 1824 25 uh, 1840 or something like that right now what i'm looking for i'm looking to see if we can get another retracement back down to this daily support level i have this marked at 1776 every trade i've taken on gold this week or you know um has tried to ha ha i have tried to have it be around this area okay uh let's see don't need no 50 some pips that's fucking ridiculous all right, so let's go to a daily time frame real quick. 
All right, so from the daily time frame, this is what we're looking at, right? So, you know, daily time frame, we already got three daily. We have a daily candle that closed right above it, and then the previous daily candle, you know, closed above it. So, what I'm looking for is a retracement, probably to Friday's daily low of like seventeen seventy five, seventeen seventy six. Um, and then we'll be looking to blast off from there. Now, once again, you know, just because I say that these things will happen and, you know, it doesn't happen necessarily doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Right. You know, I'm looking at the overall higher time frame. I'm not looking, I'm not focused on catching 30, 40 pips to the downside. You know, I'm looking at getting a bag this fucking summer and making sure that the summer reset. Um, I'm actually catching it at the lows and people are like, oh, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? You just keep fucking practicing and keep looking at the charts, right? Um, there is a couple more bonus ones that I'd like to look at. I like to look at e, uh, EU, I mean EA, right? So EA, you know, if you guys see this right here, right? I put this up here back in, I don't know, June or some shit, but this was uh, respecting this February level, right? So price, even though we did not hit all the way this 159 level, right? Uh, we got very close to 158, you know, 750. And this is the bottom of my ellipse. You can see exhaustion, one, two, three, four, four wicks uh, exhausted. And then on the fourth wick, you know, it just comes falling down. So what I'm looking for, once again, and this is aligning with the fact that we are going to have um, uh, Australian news uh, later to later this this week. Right. So I'm expecting a, actually a retracement back to the upside before we fall all the way back down. Right. So that would probably be considered, uh, let me see, maybe a triple top at this level of 158, you know, 500 or 158, uh, 158, 500 or 158. Um, 700 or so right and that thing should probably die as well uh one um so because we're expecting this this is what we're interested in same thing i see happening on on g uh ch -ch -ch on ga right so i see a couple big moves happening this week um, you know, there are big moves that happen every week, you know, um, the second and third week is usually always the fucking the biggest and shit. But at the end of the day, you know, wait, be patient. You don't need to enter these trades when the market opens right away. You know, just make sure that you have a game plan. Right. So the game plan is marking your charts before you even start trading for the week, understanding what it is that you're looking for. Um, making sure, you know, that you have specific targets and, and, you know, locked, right? The best way for you to find targets is just look at, you know, four hour, uh, look at the four hours and just kind of, you know, kind of see where price gets exhausted and make sure that, you know, your risk reward one to three, one to two, you know, one to four. It doesn't matter if you are scalping, you can have a three pip stop loss and catch 12 pips. That's still one to four right there, right? You know, I prefer to have 10 pips and then maybe catch 40 or a 15 pip stop loss and then probably catch 60 pips, right? So, you know, everyone is different, but um, what needs to stay the same throughout everyone's trading is making sure that risk management is key, uh, not to over trade, not to over leverage. I've done that plenty of times in the past, you know, just gotten more mature in my trading and just looking to share what has helped me, right? So I don't think I have anything else to say other than that, Forex Fargo checking out. Um, thank you guys and let me know if you happen to catch some tips this week. Happy 4th of July.